Hi everyone, good morning. Today is 2nd of January and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. In this particular video, we shall be discussing entire analysis of Hindu. We will take all the relevant articles in today's newspaper with their background as well as way forward. And also you can download the explainer notes of this particular session from Telegram channel. Link for Telegram is given in description box in YouTube. And in these explainer notes, you will find all the articles arranged in the manner of a mains uh, question, mains answer. Now, uh, so here all articles we have uh, covered in this particular format. You can download these particular notes. Now, before starting session, we take overview of entire newspaper so that you can understand that which articles are relevant in the today's newspaper so that you can skim through the papers. Okay. And one more thing that uh, I have went through PIB and Indian Express also. But there are no much different or some particular articles that were, uh, uh, there were not some special articles. So that is, uh, we are not covering today. Okay. Now, here we have Delhi edition of Hindu. And on first page, we have this article, GST revenue growth dips to a three month low in December. Now, I have told you this many number of times that you are not really required to track month by month GST collections because by the time you'll write your exam, this thing would have changed. So therefore not needed, however, you need to have an understanding that GST collections over a period have gradually are, are gradually increasing. So we see that post pandemic recovery is going in a good way. Here we have this article Expo sat in orbit. We'll take this particular article for examination. Then we have these advertisements, etc. Nothing important. Then in city section, regional articles, regional news, uh, tenders, etc. They have been given. Okay, so please skip it. Nothing much relevant is given in this particular section. And if you are having some different edition of Hindu, this section will be different in your paper. Generally, much articles are not here, uh, there. Sign of the future. Now, this article talks about the PSLV C-58 flight of ISRO that has been launched yesterday. We'll cover this particular article also. So, this article along with page number one article will club it and will read it. Then responding to new COVID-19 sub-variant. So you might already be knowing that JN1 new sub-variant of COVID has emerged and more than 190 around 196 cases of JN1 variant has also been reported from India. Now understand this particular thing guys that actually there are so many variants of COVID-19 that has emerged. They become the variant of concern. Okay. Right now what has happened advisory have been given to state governments that they need to keep on track. They need to focus on testing. Genome sequencing is to be done. But one thing you need to understand. One thing you need to understand is that basically uh, you are not really required to go too much in detail in analyzing these variants etc. Because a lot of details are coming out. It is a really an evolving matter and even on sub variants etc. You are not required to prepare because such kind of a questions are not asked. And in this article, uh, I have read it entirely, but academic UPSC or our exam related substance is not there. So I will not advise you to go in this particular article. Then below article, uh, re uh, reigniting the flame of India Korea defense cooperation. Now this is an important article, good article. We'll take this particular article for examination. US should not see Houthi attacks as a concern independent of the Gaza war. So this development I think in past week we have done at least two, three times. So basically what has happened now in Red Sea, Houthis who are operating out of Yemen, they have started attacking ships. Okay. And therefore many of vessel operators, ship operators, they have suspended their shipping from Red Sea. Even yesterday I have compared Panama Canal and Suez Canal, find where the crisis are also going on. So from Red Sea, we go to Suez Canal. So basically it has been said that these attacks by Houthis are being done in response of Israel's war on Gaza. Now, USA is not recognizing this particular fact. So, article says that USA should recognize that it is the part and parcel of one unfolding crisis only. Then moving on, next page, the woes of pensioners and PF members. So, this particular article, guys, is talking about the recent EPFO notification that has been released with respect to the pension payments. Okay. Again, guys, not really needed to go too much in detail. Fine. Then for the reluctance to act in Tamil Nadu state of play article. Then in text and context, India's 1991 crisis and the RBI governor's role. So this particular article, it is, uh, this particular article is a tribute to uh, S. Venkat Raman, an IAS officer who served as an RBI governor in 1990 who recently passed away. 
why did FIU IND act against virtual asset providers? We'll see this article. Then how radio carbon dating revolutionized science will take this particular article also. Then further moving on, uh, Jay Shankar needs to needs to Nepal. Uh, here, sorry, Jay Shankar heads to Nepal this week. We'll take this particular article also for examination. Then further, civilians, four civilians got down in Manipur, Zimphal Valley. Fine, nothing much important. Extremism in Assam 90% over says CM Hemanta. So, in context of Assam, we have seen recently Ulfa, where we have seen triple tight agreement has been signed between government of India, government of Assam and Ulfa. Ulfa, which was an extremist group, has decided that they will be joining the peace process. Okay, so moving on in this di direction. So, uh, after Iron Bridge, Rail Track, Pond stolen in Bihar, so, the, though this is a concerning issue, but uh, not really needed to go too much in detail in that article. Case by case exemption from new MG Narega payment system center. So, basically guys, what happened recently, recently, government of India has notified this thing that from 1st January, all the payments that is being done to the MG Narega workers will be done through the Aadhaar enabled payment system. Aadhaar enabled payment system. So, basically, if you are working as an MG Narega worker and if you wish to receive your payment, you need to seed your bank account with Aadhaar. Fine. Only that information, only that money will be transferred. But there are many people who has not seeded Aadhaar with their bank account and they might face a problem. So therefore, it has been said that case by case exemption, fine, might be given. But still many of the NGOs, civil societies, they have raised this particular concern multiple number of times. Okay, then moving on, opposition struggles in calibrating response, fine, nothing important is given. 196 cases of COVID-19, okay. Then further moving on, first girls' scenic school opened in Mathura, okay. Then uh, SUVs helped power PV wholesale past the 40 lakh mark, fine, corporate trends etc. are largely given here. Okay, and then in world page, in a shift of tactics, Israel reduces presence of troops inside Gaza. Okay, so uh, as Israel reduces the presence of troops, it is being seen as a positive movement in this particular direction. Then further moving on, we have the sports section. And guys, after the sports section, we have this particular article, uh, psychoanalysis. Okay, so uh, basically when we talk about the psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis is a basically Sigmund Freud, Sigmund Freud, uh, psychologist, psych he came out with the psychoanalysis approach in which the people, see, often people might behave in a particular way because of some trauma that happened in their childhood whose memory is buried. So, their subconscious mind will be jiggled up and it will be learned that how their present behavior is flowing. Now, this article is actually explaining psychoanal psychoanalysis core from the point of view of psychology, okay, and how this research was carried and all such kind of a things are being provided, okay. So, my point is that, guys, if you only have psychology optional, you can read this particular article, but anyhow, if you have psychology optional, you might be knowing a lot about the Sigmund Freud, but for GS point of view, article is not that much important because entire, entire psychoanalysis, its premise, methodology, who discovered it, what different researchers have done contribution in it, that particular thing has been provided. So initially I took this article, but I did not found that substance here. So this is overview of entire newspaper and I hope that you have understood that which articles are important and guys see this particular thing. I repeat it many number of times that every topper or the people who have made in this exam or the veterans who have given a couple of attempts, they always say that ensure that you cover your newspaper within one hour. So how to cover newspaper within one hour? Only when you know the art of understanding which articles are important, simply entire newspaper page one to last page cannot be covered even in four or five hours. But even that is not needed. So first art is learning the art of skimming through paper and just weeding out the articles which are not necessary. Okay, this, that is about it. And now let's take discussion article by article. Okay, so... Fine, every class we start with the GS quotation and the idea of this particular quotation is to give you content which you can use in examination in your essay paper on your or in your GS paper. Okay, so today we are going to take this quotation from C.S. Lewis. Okay, and uh, this is one of my favorite quote also. C.S. Lewis says, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching, even when no one is watching.
सो ऑफन वट हैपन वी डू गुड थिंग बिकॉज वी एक्सपेक्ट एप्रिसिएशन फ्रॉम अदर पीपल वी एक्सपेक्ट रिकॉग्निशन फ्रॉम अदर पीपल ओके सो ऑफन वी डू दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग बट दैट इज नॉट द ट्रू इंटीग्रिटी ट्रू इंटीग्रिटी इज दैट यू डू राइट एज अ मैटर ऑफ योर ड्यूटी यू डू मॉरल एक्ट नॉट टू गेन एप्रिसिएशन बट यू थिंक दैट इट इज द एक्सेप्टेबल ह्यूमन बिहेवियर सो इवन वेन नो वन इज वॉचिंग डू द राइट थिंग इज द ट्रू इंटीग्रिटी यू कैन यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर कोटेशन इन जी एस पेपर नंबर फोर एथिक्स इंटीग्रिटी एंड एप्टीट्यूड एंड ऑल्सो गाइज अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट एज कोटेशन आर गिवन टू यू you should not have this particular habit that okay i will collect 500 quotations but i will not have even one quotation in my mind no just collect 30 40 good quotations but ensure that you are remembering it you are able to reproduce in exam and you are able to further contemplate on those particular quotations okay so that is all about it now i hope that you have understood it moving in this direction and let's take first article so first article expo sat in orbit to study black holes and neutron stars and this particular article guys will take with respect to prelims science and tech this article will take with respect to prelims science and tech also will take this particular article with respect to gs paper number 3 development in science and technology space okay now actually there are two articles that have come on the same line first article is on this page number 1 and then there is this editorial article sign of the future both are giving the same information so i have clubbed both of them no need to read it separately okay so basically what has happened so isro has done a really good start on 1st of january and on 1st of january isro they have launched they have launched pslv c58 x ray polarimeter satellite which in the short is called as the exposat mission exposat mission now this particular mission is an important mission why because in this particular mission we have launched this particular module exposat which is going to do the x ray polarimetry x ray polarimetry now first of all i'll explain you this also but let's understand some basic things first and then we'll go that what is the objective of this particular satellite now basically basically understand this particular thing guys that x rays x rays are there now what are x rays x rays are electromagnetic waves x rays are electromagnetic waves and these electromagnetic waves they are generated they are generated by the movement of electric charges and often we have many celestial bodies for example neutron stars are there black holes are there and many other celestial bodies are there it is assumed that they are constantly emitting the electric charge in turn which becomes the x ray now understand this thing that if we understand these x rays the patterns of these particular x rays particularly the polarized x rays if we understand we can learn a lot about black holes and neutron stars particularly when we talk about black holes there is a lot of mystery with respect to the black holes fine we know that they are those particular spots which have a huge gravity but beyond that understanding is very much limited so to understand the black holes neutron stars and other such celestial bodies it is very important to track these x rays and this particular expo set satellite that has been launched it is going to track these particular x rays and therefore it will enhance our understanding to understand black holes neutron stars now this particular pslv c5058 which is taking aboard this expo set satellite it will be launched in the low earth orbit at the height of 650 km and this particular satellite which will be placed at the inclination of 6 degrees moreover this mission is very important why because india has joined elite group of country to join this x ray satellite only nasa has launched x ray satellite earlier and now india has become second okay so expo sat is the second x ray polarimetry mission it is the second x ray polarimetry mission in the world 
एंड द फर्स्ट वन वॉज नासाज इमेजिंग एक्सरे पॉलरमेट्री एक्सप्लोर विच वॉज लॉन्च इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सो गाइज यू हैव सीन दैट एक्चुअली दिस इज वेरी गुड ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ इसरो विच इज डूइंग दीज ब्रेथ टेकिक विच इज टेकिंग द ब्रेथ टेकिंग लीप्स अर्लियर चंद्रयान थ्री वॉज लॉन्च ऑन वॉज लॉन्च ऑन टू द पोलर साइड ऑफ द मून ओके नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर सेटेलाइट इट विल कैरी टू पे लोड्स नंबर वन इज पॉलिक्स पॉलिक्स that is a polarimeter instrument in x rays and the second is the x pact and both of them what they are going to do they are going to track the polarized x rays and these two particular modules they have been developed by the raman research institute raman research institute okay sorry uh, polix has been developed by raman research institute and x pact has been developed by the space astronomy group of bengal urs ursc bengaluru also this particular also this particular mission it has launched 10 payloads developed by the space startups now we see that in india democratization of space is happening where startups are also launching their space modules their satellites so 10 such satellites have also been taken and this 2024 is going to be a very crucial year for space explorations why because india is looking forward for gaganyaan which will be the human space flight and in the direction of gaganyaan in the direction of gaganyaan which is india's human space mission fine we will be doing some flight test also unmanned flights will be taken and eventually then the manned flight will be taken so in the direction of in the direction of gaganyaan fine this is going to be a very important year 2024 so that is all about it and now moving on and let's take the other article moving on and let's take the other article okay reigniting the flame of india korea defense cooperation now this particular article will take with respect to gs paper number 2 international relation will take this particular article with respect to gs paper number 2 international relation okay so basically guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about india south korea okay first of all understand that south korea has developed state of the art defense technologies and india is very much interested in procuring defense technologies for south korea but for a considerable period of time india south korea relations were not very much good it is because of the fact that you might be knowing that in cold war period india signed treaty of friendship with ussr in 1971 and after that it was said that india's non aligned policy is not actually not aligned it has a tilt towards the soviet russia towards the soviet union and for that particular thing a large number of countries which belonged to the us camp they did not see india favorably and when we talk about south korea south korea has been inclined towards the capitalistic us camp there was it was the part of the cold war in in the cold war it was the follower of the us camp so therefore you south korea also did not so india very favorably but now the relations have improved into the last few years okay and south korea is giving a lot of defense technologies to india now recently what has happened recently what has happened chief of army staff chief of army staff general manoj pandey made a visit to korea and this particular visit is being seen as an important visit for india korea defense relations india korea defense relations now first of all this article is talking that korea needs to change its perceptions with respect to india korea has seen india as the buyer of defense weapons but when it comes to technology transfer when it comes to capability building of korea, uh, of india their south korea does not seems to be very much interested so south korea needs to change its perception and needs to understand that india is not merely a largest consumer of defense products rather india stands to be a regional power and this regional power is very much important to maintain the balance in asia to keep china under check particularly guys when we talk about south korea understand this particular calculus very carefully south korea's enemy is north korea and north korea gets ideological and gets a lot of support from china 
सो अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग दैट चाइना वॉन्ट्स टू कीप नॉर्थ कोरिया हैप्पी एंड देयर फॉर चाइना साउथ कोरिया रिलेशन आर ऑल ऑफ एन नॉट वेरी मच गुड सो साउथ कोरिया ऑल्सो वॉन्ट्स दैट द चाइना शुड बी केप्ट अंडर कंट्रोल एंड फॉर कीपिंग चाइना अंडर कंट्रोल अ रीजनल पावर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंडिया इज वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट सो देयर फॉर साउथ कोरिया नीड्स टू सी इंडिया एज अ रीजनल बैलेंसर नॉट एज द कंज्यूमर ऑफ डिफेंस वेपनरी एंड द कोल्ड वॉर मेंटेलिटी दैट वॉज देयर इन साउथ कोरिया टू सी इंडिया एज बिलोंगिंग टू सोवियत यूनियन कैंप दैट पर्टिकुलर मेंटेलिटी इज टू बी चेंज दैट पर्टिकुलर मेंटेलिटी इज टू बी चेंज मोर ओवर अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट राइट नाउ वी फाइंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट कोरियन डिफेंस इस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स कोरियन डिफेंस इस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स दे नीड टू जस्ट फोकस ऑन प्रॉफिट ड्रिवन वेपन सेल्स टू इंडिया rather they for should focus on helping india to develop its own defense capability so in this particular capacity knowledge transfer is very much important now there is one more thing that is coming here here see right now you know first is china and russia they have developed a coalition china and russia they have developed a coalition particularly for the west now here there is a south korea let's say here there is a north korea now here's let's say there is usa and here let's say there is india so basically guys understand this particular thing understand this particular thing find uh, that when we find this particular thing south korea if south korea fosters a good relation with india okay india has a good relation with the usa usa has not very good relations with the china and russia okay also if south korea maintain good relation with the usa and india north korea will also not like it so understand that a very interesting and a unique geopolitical scenario is also emerging here and this scenario that is emerging here is that this coalition of north korea china russia it poses a serious challenge to the relations between these two country see this particular thing see this particular thing that if south korea and india maintains good relation and south korea sponsors india in terms of the weapon development what happens china might see it as a threat china might see it as a threat then what happens china might pressurize china might go to north korea and might ask north korea to adopt an offensive stance against south korea this is one way second way what can happen china can ask russia now russia and india have very good relation china might ask russia that you please ask india to not to go for good relations with south korea that might happen so basically in this particular relation a lot of challenges are also there but countries need to find their place india can very suitably find its place why because right now india's foreign policy is characterized by strategic autonomy which is based on the concept of transactional approach under this concept of strategic autonomy india very clearly provides that we don't have we don't have any permanent friend we don't have any permanent enemy our relations will be guided by transactional approach wherever india's national interest is getting fulfilled india will support that particular nation so this is india's approach that has been there okay so india will not find a problem south korea needs to see that how it is going to solve it but both the countries need each other both the countries have complementaries so therefore south korea needs to help india to develop its capabilities now as a chief of army staff has visited south korea many high level military exchanges have also happened between the top korean defense institutions and further it is being seen that korea might help india in developing the capabilities in the defense production so this is very much beneficial for defense technology industry technology industry partnership knowledge transfer from south korea to india okay then also also there are many other areas where india and korea can collaborate apart from weapons other areas for example when we talk about south korea we know that south korea has advanced high tech south korea has advanced high tech uh, digital capabilities and because of the high tech digital capabilities south korea is often seen as the high tech digital power high tech digital super power now south korea can help india to secure its critical infrastructure from cyber attacks recently you might have seen in the news that aims server were compromised and a lot of attacks on critical establishments have been made by the cyber hackers so therefore what south korea can help south korea can provide uh, technologies to india to develop the robust cyber security also on maritime security there is scope between south korea and india 
both countries can focus on joint patrolling information sharing and on other maritime interest the countries can collaborate okay so this is all about the india south korea relation now apart from so here we have seen weapon technology transfer second is cyber technology transfer third we have seen maritime cooperation then the next area of cooperation the next area of cooperation that comes here is that india and south korea can leverage their united nation peacekeeping ex expertise and can collaborate with each other to further bring the long lasting peace into the troubled areas such as the africa west asia middle east etc also then there is a low hanging fruit in assistance in the humanitarian assistance and disaster relief humanitarian assistance and disaster relief okay so this is something there where both the countries can focus so what is now needed what is now needed a strategic balanced and innovative approach between south korea korea and india is needed both the countries need to understand that strategic autonomy concept is to be explored more both the countries need to use diplomatic channels that how they can enhance their cooperation but at the same time they should ensure that other countries are not getting antagonized so for this a balanced diplomatic approach is needed okay fine uh Aditi Avasti, no voice, sir. Aditi, please check from your end because here uh, the voice is fine. Okay. Now, moving on. Moving on to the next article. Okay. Why did FIU act against virtual asset providers? Now, what is FIU? FIU stands for Financial Intelligence Unit India. FIU stands for Financial Intelligence Unit India. So what has happened recently, Financial Intelligence Unit, it has the send show cause notices to the virtual digital asset service providers. Virtual digital asset service provider. Now before going in this particular article, you need to know that what are these virtual digital asset service provider. Now what is a digital asset? Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, it is an example of a digital asset. For example, I can buy, let's say, let's say I have bought a Bitcoin. Now this Bitcoin has some monetary value. And when this Bitcoin's value will increase, it will give me return also. So this Bitcoin is a digital asset, digital asset. Now see, suppose you have land. Now, land is a physical thing. Land is a physical thing and it is existing <laughs> at a particular place. You need not to store land at any place. But when we have the digital assets, for example, cryptocurrencies are there. Where you will store cryptocurrencies? These digital assets are to be stored in a digital wallet. And when these digital assets are to be exchanged, they are to be bought, they are to be sold, you need the service of some third party. So there are many exchanges which we call by the name of crypto exchanges. These crypto exchanges, they help you in buying the uh, cryptocurrencies, selling the cryptocurrencies, storing these cryptocurrencies, managing these cryptocurrencies. So virtual digital asset, virtual digital asset service providers are the companies which provide services to manage digital assets such as cryptocurrency. And many of the examples are there, for example, Binance, KU Coin and many other companies are there. So recently, FIU, Financial Intelligence Unit, has sent a show cause notices to them. Now, why show cause notices have been sent and even it is exploring that their domain, their websites are to be blocked. Now, why this particular thing is happening? It is because, it is because it has been said that these particular, these particular entities, they are operating illegally. They are operating illegally. Now, question comes that why they are operating illegally? why they are operating illegally so basically large number of people large number of people are buying cryptocurrencies there is a possibility that a criminal who has earned 100 crore rupees by extortion crime he is using these 100 crore rupees to buy the cryptocurrency and in a way what is happening that particular money then can be for example a criminal used 100 crore rupee to buy cryptocurrency and that cryptocurrency is then transferred to some of an entity in let's say some of an entity in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, that entity is sponsoring terrorism. So this particular route can be used for terror financing. Also for money laundering, 
this particular route can be used. So therefore, what has happened, Indian government notified this particular thing that all the virtual digital asset service providers, they need to carry a due diligence of their clients. They need to have a detailed KYC, know your customer of their clients. Also, they need to see that they need to, they need to ensure, they need to ensure that they are complying the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So under Prevention of Money Laundering Act, a lot of compliances are to be done to ensure that all the money that they are receiving, it is not coming from disputed sources. It is not coming, it is not a, uh, it is not coming from criminal activities. So under the PMLA, due diligence were to be done. But many of these, many of these particular virtual digital asset companies have not done that particular diligence. Government has provided this particular thing that if any crypto exchange, any VDA is operating in India, doesn't matter whether they have a physical presence or not. Because for example, Binance, Binance, okay, and many of the companies, fine, they might not have a physical office in India, but still they have to do the compliance under PMLA. But many of them did not did the compliance under PMLA. So therefore, what has happened? India, India has sent them the show cause notice and is exploring to block their URLs also. Now, in G20, in G20, India is advocating for a global regulation of cryptocurrency. Also, India is further talking about that money laundering as an activity is to be controlled. So, in this particular line, this particular step has been taken by the FIU, Financial Intelligence Unit. So, that is all guys about this particular article. And now, moving to the next article, what is radiocarbon dating? And this particular article again will see with respect to science and technology prelims as well as for GS paper number 3 science and technology will take this particular article radiocarbon dating. Now, uh, I am pretty sure that you might have already heard the term radiocarbon dating in your ancient history also because many a number of a times the fossils when they are found fossil of an animal, fossil of a human if it is found then it's its death time is ascertained by do, doing the radiocarbon dating. Now, first of all, what is dating? Okay, what is dating? Dating is a method by which the age of an object can be determined. The age of an object can be determined. For example, you found a bone of a dinosaur. Okay, you found a bone of a dinosaur. Now, as you found the bone of a dinosaur, find how old it is. You can find that particular age through the radiocarbon dating through the radiocarbon dating and in this capacity we have the concept of c14 dating c14 dating c14 means carbon 14 now first of all how the what is carbon 14 what is carbon 14 so basically understand this thing that what is happening cosmic rays cosmic rays okay cosmic rays or the rays from the outer space they are constantly coming to the earth okay fine so when the cosmic rays which has the charged particles they are coming on the earth they are coming on the earth they are slamming they are con coming in contact with the atoms of the gases fine they are coming in contact with the atoms of gases and as this cosmic rays from the outer space they slam they come in contact with the atoms of gases they release neutrons and in the process carbon 14 is created carbon 14 is created and carbon 14 is constantly getting created on the earth now this particular carbon 14 it combines with atmospheric oxygen it combines with atmospheric oxygen and it forms radioactive carbon dioxide and this c14 component it is available it is available in everything which contains the carbon it is available in everything which contains the carbon now you see this particular thing, you see this particular thing, we have plants, we have plants and then we have animals, we have plants and we have animals. Now you know this particular thing that the plants, they are constantly consuming the carbon dioxide and they are doing the photosynthesis. So when they are consuming carbon dioxide, what is happening, they are also consuming the C14, carbon 14 and animals, humans, what they are doing, they are consuming plant, they are consuming the other biomass which have carbon in them. So humans, animals, they are consuming carbon-14 through the food that they are eating. Plants are consuming the carbon-14 through the CO2 that they are consuming. 
and what happens understand this thing that the carbon 14 c14 that we are consuming we are, it is getting lost also it is getting lost also through our body through defecation degradation etc but we are consuming it also so my point is that throughout the life of a plant or an animal c14 is there in the body it gets lost then it gets uh, replenished so a constant amount of c14 is available in the living beings be it the plant and be it animal but once once an animal has died what will happen animal once has died will obviously not consume food so c14 will not come in the system but existing c14 it is getting lost it is getting lost now understand this particular thing that by seeing that how much carbon 14 has been lost we can ascertain the death time of that particular organism. Suppose an organism has lost a particular amount of C14. It means that let's say it died 500 years back. But if it has lost more C14, might be that the organism died 50,000 years back. Now, here you need to understand the concept of half-life. Here you need to understand the concept of half-life. Now, when we talk about carbon-14, carbon-14's half-life is 5730 years. Now, what is this half-life? Let's understand in very simple words. Suppose, this is the total C14 that was there in the body. Its half will remain. Its half will remain after 5730 years. <coughs> okay. Means, let's say this half has been lost. Then, its half will be remained after next 5730 years next 5 7 30 years let's say after the next 5 7 30 years this half have, have been lost then its half will be remained after next 5 7 30 years okay then what will happen its half will be remained after 5 7 30 years so basically what actually can be done around 60 millennium okay around 60 millennium old creatures Fine, their lifespan can be identified this by using this carbon dating method. Carbon dating method. Also, radiocarbon dating has been proposed, uh, has also been proposed to be used in um, ascertaining the age of many of the monuments, etc. In the past, also, such kind of a things have happened. So, this is about the carbon 14 dating method. Fine, I hope you have understood it. And now, moving to the next article. Jay Shankar heads to Nepal this week, power packs on agenda. So basically guys, uh, on January 4 and January 5, that is uh, two days later, Minister of External Affairs, Mr. S. Jay Shankar will make, a, will make a visit to Nepal. First of all, I will not advise you to track this particular article too much right now because once this meeting will happen, after the meeting, the concrete takeaways we will be able to understand in a more better way that what actually happened. So, right now, just you need to take an idea about what are on the cards in this particular development. So, basically, what has happened in this particular meeting that will happen, it might be hydroelectric power pact might be signed, hydroelectric power pact might be signed, okay. Then after discussions or air connectivity, digital payment can be done. Now guys understand this particular thing, that when we talk about Nepal, okay, Nepal, Bhutan, they have a lot of swift flowing rivers, they have a lot of swift fast flowing rivers. And because of that, they have a lot of hydroelectric power potentials. They have a lot of hydroelectric power potential. So what has done, what has been done, India has developed, helped these country to develop the hydroelectric power plants. And in turn, India is willing to purchase the electricity that is being produced in these particular country. Okay, so power agreements are a very important low hanging fruit between the countries such as India, Nepal, India, Bhutan and even India, Bangladesh. Okay. Then the next is air connectivity and the digital payment. Now you already know that India has developed UPI, Unified Payment Interface, which has enhanced the ease of digital transactions in India. Now other countries are also interesting, interested in uh, taking the digital technologies from India. Now, when we talk about Nepal, guys, understand this particular thing, that first of all, first of all, uh, the visit to Nepal is due. The visit to Nepal is due because the last high-profile meeting that was... Uh, that, that that was held was in January 2021. Okay. Now understand this particular thing that India is following the neighborhood first policy. 
India is following neighborhood first policy. And a part of this neighborhood first policy, Nepal becomes a very important partner. And even it is said that between India and Nepal, there is a roti beti ka rishta. There is a relation of roti and beti. Why we use this particular term? Because a lot of matrimonial ties are there between people of India and Nepal and a large number of people from Nepal are coming to India for their livelihood. Okay, so basically understand this particular thing that what is happening? 1950 India-Nepal Friendship Treaty, 1950 India-Nepal Friendship Treaty is there which has governed the relations between India and Nepal. But often Nepal has said that this particular treaty gives a lot of unfavorable benefits to India. So Nepal is looking forward to renew this particular treaty. Okay. However, on this particular thing, the working group has been established, but nothing concrete has come that how this particular friendship treaty will evolve. In this particular meeting, it might be discussed that this particular friendship treaty, how it is to be revised forward. Also what has happened, also what has happened. Okay. So uh, what has happened? We see this that Mr. Prachanda, when he came to India, he has appealed this particular thing to India that India should allow the air connectivity, India should allow the international flights to fly over India in order to access two of the Nepal's new airports that is at Pokhara and Bhairava. Now, these two airports at Pokhara and Bhairava which are constructed in Nepal, they have been constructed by China and these particular two airports are constructed in the vicinity of Lumbini. They are constructed in the vicinity of Lumbini, which is the birthplace of the Buddha. Now, India objects the China's funding in this particular projects. So, therefore, India is not allowing the flights to fly over the India to reach the Pokhara and Bhairava. So, the Nepal uh, is appealing India that India should allow it. So, this particular thing might also be discussed. This particular thing might also be discussed. Now, understand that if India will not allow the air connectivity to these particular places, if India will not allow the aircraft to fly over it, these airports will not be able to earn the revenue and they might fall in the debt trap of China. Now, see, India is in a sticky situation here. If India allows the aircraft, then often, th then what is happening? In a way, it is giving approval to the Chinese funded projects in India's neighborhood. But if India does not allow it, this airport will not be able to pay the debt to China and China will take over it. Then also there will be a problem. So often these kind of a situations develop. Okay, one more thing guys that I'll, I'm saying you that no need to go too much in detail in this particular article. Why? Because as this visit will happen on January 4 and January 5, the actual contours, actual things that are coming out of it will be taken up anyhow in the details in the newspapers then. So right now, no need to go too much in detail. Okay, so guys, that is all about the today's newspaper discussion. And with this, we have come to an end to this particular session. I hope that you have understood this session. I hope that you have liked this particular video in PIB. Today, there was no relevant article. So I have not covered PIB. And in Indian Express and Hindustan Times also, I went through the both the newspaper, but they were containing the same articles as in Hindu. Okay, so that is all about it. Now we'll meet tomorrow. Till then, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much.